You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. Thanks to Concordia University, Wisconsin for supporting The Coffee Hour. Find out more about Concordia University, Wisconsin at cuw.edu. Live Uncommon. We are continuing our conversation in the Set Apart to Serve series, and today we head to seminary. Two, two seminaries. Both sem- Well, We're heading to Concordia Theological Seminary in Fort Wayne and just across the street here in St. Louis, well, a few streets across town to Concordia Seminary in St. Louis. Joining us today from Concordia Seminary, St. Louis fourth year student, Jason Com. Jason, welcome to the Coffee Hour. Thanks so much. It's great to be here. And also joining us from Concordia Theological Seminary in Fort Wayne, Indiana, fourth year student, Zachary Stair. Zachary, welcome to the Coffee Hour. Thank you guys for having me. Let's learn about your stories and what got you thinking about pastoral ministry and formation at seminary. Let's start with you, Jason. When did you begin thinking about becoming a pastor? So this was not a lifelong dream of mine. For a long time, I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. But probably around Christmas break, my senior year of high school is when I really started to think about this for the first time and make some decisions going forward. So I went to Lutheran South High School in St. Louis. It's where my dad went. And so I really had no choice in the matter. That's just where I went. (laughs) And when I was looking at colleges and where to go, I thought that I really wanted to be a teacher. Both my parents are engineers. And so they have desk jobs. They are in a bunch of meetings and sit behind computers all day. And that did not really interest me. I wanted to be around people and to be actively involved in people's lives. And so for whatever reason, I thought, okay, I really am into chemistry right now in high school. And that's something that I could see myself teaching high school kids in the future. I'm pretty sarcastic. So I figured lots of my jokes and humor would just go right over grade schoolers' heads. And so I, I kind of decided, okay, high school chemistry is what I want to do. Right around that same time, there was a friend of mine that read a devotion that I had written for school. And she was kind of impressed with it and came up to me one day and said, hey, you should think about being a pastor. I read your devotion and it just, it was great. And you should think about doing this for your life. And no one had ever told me that before. And so I kind of laughed and said, no, that's, that's not what I want to be doing. And I feel like God was taking notes there because from that moment, there were a lot more people that said the exact same thing to me. They kept saying, Jason, you should think about being a pastor. I think you'd be good at it. And I kept saying, no, that's not, that's not something I want to do. I don't, I don't think I'm going to be good at that. No one in my family has ever gone into church work in any capacity before. And so I just didn't think that I had what it took. And so I didn't really take anybody seriously. But it was over the summer when I was on a mission trip in Chicago, I was on an outreach team and my own pastor was leading the team I was on. And one day he eventually said, you know, you should think about being a pastor. I think you'd be pretty good at this kind of thing. So I kind of rolled my eyes and said, really, are you serious? Like everyone's been saying that. And that's not what I want to hear. But that's when I really started to think about it seriously was maybe, maybe this is what I I should be doing. Because a lot of people have told me this. Now, sometime before this mission trip, I did decide to go to Concordia University, Chicago or River Forest. If you graduated there a few years earlier. But CUC is the place I decided to go because that that just felt like I could belong there and be at home there. And once I got there, some of my best friends in the world that I met there and still am very close with today, they kept telling me the same thing that I heard from people back home. Like, what are you doing studying chemistry and education? You should join the pre-seminary program. And right around like early October, I just reached a point where I couldn't say no anymore. And I realized I didn't want to say no anymore. And I wanted to give it a try. And so I told the campus pastor at the time, it was Jeff Leininger, a much longer version of this story. And he looked at me when we were done talking and he said, so you want to be a pastor? You're crazy. Let's get you signed up in the pre-sub program and get you on your way. And my life has been so much more joyful and better as a result ever since. And I'm at the point now where I can't imagine doing anything else with my life. And so It took a period of about 10 months for God to convince me to do this, but he just kept sending person after person after person my way. And now it's something that I genuinely do want to do with my life. And I'm excited for the future of this ministry of being a pastor. I love hearing the story and the reminder that that people just, when you you see a talent, when you see someone that's 
that has these these skill sets and these things to mention it and to say something. I think that's been a theme throughout all of these set apart to serve conversations. How many people have been like, I wasn't thinking about being a pastor until somebody actually said something. So I love hearing that in your story as well, Jason. Zachary, what about you? When, how did you decide to study for pastoral ministry? Yeah, so my story is going to be probably a little bit different than Jason's, although I know quite a few people who have this, you know, I didn't really want to, but then it just kept, people kept asking me. Well, mine started in a little town called Freistat, Missouri, where our church kind of had a high turnaround. I was seven years old. So this was the first time that I actually thought about being some sort of church worker. We had a missionary come. I can't remember where. I was seven years old, but he came and he preached a sermon for us. And then he came to our Bible study hour and had a demonstration of sorts for us. And there was persecution in the church that he was a missionary for. And he said, there will be so many refugees leaving this country that they had to ask them at the borders, are you a Christian before you left? And if you said yes, there was some sort of punishment. So at seven years old, you know, what did I say? But yes, you know, and so at seven years old, uh, willing to uh, die for the faith. In that, and that has been instilled by these pastors who have been preaching uh, since an early age. Um, And then after that, I kind of delved into the typical, like maybe firefighter, astronaut, what have you. Um, I kind of settled on a a different career of choice later on. And in eighth grade year, we had this paper where you had a career paper. And I realized after doing that, that this career that I had chosen in my own mind was not it for me because all along the way I had fellow students, teachers, and others recognizing the talent that I just happened to have with this confession of faith, even to the point of death, and and unabashedly just sharing this with those around me. And so by the age of 13, I said, well, maybe missionaries, not quite it, but what about pastor? And as I'm going through confirmation class, Pastor Adam Snowberger, I was in one of his first confirmation classes right out of St. Louis Seminary. And he said that I'd be a good pastor. And our senior pastor at the time, Pastor Jack Gillum, he died over COVID in 2020. Uh, he he was living in St. Louis after his uh, retirement there. Um, but he had also told me that I would make a, a good answer. And so all of these influences, um, this ability that the Lord had given me, this gift to speak to others about faith, it, it just stuck with me. And by 13 year, years old, I said, you know what? I am going to to Concordia University, Nebraska, because I had moved from Freistat, Missouri to Nebraska at about nine years old. And so I'm in Nebraska. I'm going to go there to the pre-seminary program, and I'm going to St. Louis Seminary, because I had no idea that there was a Fort Wayne Seminary at the time. And so graduated high school, went to Concordia, Nebraska. The plan was all in place. Had a great time, met a, a ton of friends at the pre-seminary group there. And eventually I met both of the recruiters for both seminaries. And then I realized that there was another seminary <laughs> in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And I, I decided to to give both seminaries a visit. And I ended up coming here to Fort Wayne, Indiana. Let's talk a little bit about those first two years of seminary before going to Vicarage. What was what was that like for you, Zachary? What were some of the classes you took and how did that prepare you for Vicarage? Yeah, the first two years of seminary, that was kind of like, all right, this is going to be your future. This scripture, which you are now learning, is what you 
are going to be responsible for preaching to these people to give to your people in a congregation someday to care for them in spirit, to care for their souls. And at that point, I didn't think that I quite understood that as practically in the first two years. It was more theoretical, maybe even like, like I didn't know how to apply it right away. But our professors here are so great that that they're able to to form us, to shape us into a way of giving this scripture, this holy word of God to his people so that they may know that what Christ has done, and it's, it's Easter season now, what Christ has done, he's risen from the dead, that is for you also. We're learning about the uh, formation of a pastor, and we're going to talk about vicarage in just a little bit as well with students both from Concordia Seminary in St. Louis and Concordia Theological Seminary in Fort Wayne, Indiana, as part of our Set Apart to Serve series here on The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. At Concordia University, Wisconsin, we believe you were created for a reason to use your God-given gifts to help others, to live a life of self-sacrifice in a me-first world, to live a life that's uncommon. Whether you're taking one of 50-plus online programs or learning with us in person on the shores of Lake Michigan, you'll be equipped to make an uncommon impact. Learn more at cuw.edu. Concordia University, Wisconsin. Live uncommon. Sharing our faith can sometimes be hard, especially face-to-face. That's one of the reasons KFUO is here, to share God's Word globally on your behalf and to equip you with the knowledge, confidence, and words to share Jesus yourself. This share make a gift to KFUO Radio so we can continue sharing Christ to the world. Donate online at kfuo.org slash share That's kfuo.org slash share Welcome back to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. We are continuing our conversation in the Set Apart to Serve series today, talking with students from Concordia Seminary in St. Louis and Concordia Theological Seminary in Fort Wayne, as they are, they've now completed Vicarage in fourth year and mm-hmm. looking to the future and what that holds as well, learning a little bit about the, the their path to seminary and what those early years were like at seminary. Jason, tell us about your first two years at seminary as well and how that prepared you for Vicarage. They were pretty different years, to be honest. When I think back to my first year, first year was all about getting everybody on the same page in retrospect. So it was covering the basics of things like, well, what does it mean to be confessional? Why do we have these documents from the 16th century that we put so much effort and emphasis on? And uh, why do we preach sermons to people and pour so much time into them? And why do we care for them pastorally? And so first year is all about like taking everybody from all their different walks of life and going over the basics with all of them. And kind of an underlying theme of first year, uh, like every first year from my own observation is that everybody's eager to prove themselves and show like how much they know already. And so in a sense, it kind of humbles us and gets us all on that same level so that we realize, okay, not only are we doing all these things for the church, but we're also doing it together. We are one team we're all on the same side. And that's such a gift to be the church together. And then second year really was the challenging year. Even in comparison to fourth year, I just remember I did so much writing and so many case study analyses for second year, and it was exhausting, but I learned so much from it. And in retrospect, if I didn't go through all that before vicarage, I would not have had nearly as good of a vicarage as I did. And it was crazy going over you know, theoretical situations, kind of like what Zachary was talking about. It's crazy going over those and studying those and thinking together, what do we do in this situation? And then on Vicarage, encountering like those exact scenarios, I was like, whoa, as I'm having a conversation with this person, I'm recalling a paper that I wrote about this topic. And so like, I have the answers in my head. I like, I know what I want to say and what's good to say. But then the trick over Vicarage is, okay, how do you condense this? And how do you actually share this with people in a way that anybody can understand? 
And so first and second year together just really, really prepared me for practical ministry and theology. And I can't imagine going into vicarage without those two years backing it up ahead of time. So let's talk more about that vicarage experience, that really, that real formational year when you you get your boots on the ground in a church serving people. Jason, what was the, what what was your vicarage experience like? Where did you serve? What are some of the things you got to do? I had the best vicarage, hands down. And I went to Bismarck, North Dakota, nice. Zion, Zion Lutheran Church in Bismarck, North Dakota. And this was very unexpected and very far away from pretty much everybody else that I knew. I think the closest person that I had in my life to Bismarck was like seven hours east of where I live. And I saw them one time while I was up there. So I was pretty much just dropped what I thought was going to be the middle of nowhere. And I had no clue how this was going to go. And I got there and I really hit the ground running. Suddenly, I was in charge of a year-long study of the entire Bible called Trek Through the Scriptures, which came with its own podcast. I'm going to drop that here real quickly. We That church has a podcast and it's on Spotify and Apple Music and all those other resources. But suddenly, I was in charge of that and like coming up with podcast episodes every week. And then maybe my fourth day there, I was invited to go to the youth gathering in Houston with like 33 youth and nine adults that I didn't know on a bus. We drove there. And I don't know how exciting that sounds to everybody listening, but for me, that's kind of like the perfect environment for me to be in because I just love hanging out with people. And so I got to meet everybody on the bus. We made a ton of great memories on that trip. And so it was just the perfect way to get introduced to Zion's community and to get really involved in their youth. And from there, more and more responsibilities just kept being handed to me. Like I taught Bible class at the church every Sunday, and I was suddenly preaching a lot more. And there's this residential treatment center, uh, a couple of them in North Dakota, and it's called the Dakota Boys and Girls Ranch. And I got thrown headfirst into that. And suddenly I was a spiritual caretaker for these at-risk kids that went there for a period of like four to six months. And so the joke that I tell about my vicarage year for the entire year was that it was fast, it was fun, and it was furious. Fast, fun, and furious the entire time. And it was a lot of work. It was challenging in many ways, but I loved every minute of it. And it was an unforgettable experience. And I would not have traded last year for the world. Zachary, was your your vicarage experience as tropical as Bismarck, <laughs> North Dakota? I'm not sure if sometimes the the placement director for our seminary send us some place that we haven't been before. But uh, Jason from you know St. Louis goes up to Bismarck, North Dakota. Me from Grand Island, Nebraska, went to Detroit, Michigan. And I was helping out at a historic Trinity Lutheran Church in Detroit, Michigan. That is a great cathedral style church and stained glass, wood, stone carving, preaching the gospel, the Old Testament and the altarpiece in in wood carvings and in painted figures actually tells the story of the Tadeum. And so right away on Vicarage. I was thrown into preaching here at this congregation. And what our past, what my uh, pastor told me, he said, at this congregation, we have had people like Walter A. Meyer, Matthew Harrison, many great Lutheran preachers preaching in this pulpit. So no pressure. And I got up in there and I preached, you know, my first sermon on on Vicarage there. And, you know, we worked together on preaching all year round. And by the end of it, I'm just very blessed for everything that I was able to be taught on how to preach there. But also along with that, we had, I think, six or seven retired pastors who were helping out every Sunday. And throughout the year, I took out all of these men, all these men of faith for lunch. And I talked with them, you know, if you could have any one little snippet of wisdom to give to someone who's going to be a pastor today, what would it be? 
And those little snippets I have written down in a notebook that I kept from Vicarage. And one day I will look back on those, maybe even, you know, that first year, that call day, you know, <laughs> look back on those just to see what these men of faith had to say. But yeah, there were 300 years of pastoral ministry combined, 300 plus combined years of ministry at that congregation. And it was amazing to see. But yeah, just like Jason, I was I was placed in charge of, you know, teaching God's people the faith for the first time ever. And that can be a little bit, you know, like, whoa, this is this is real right now. But what you are called to do as a future pastor is give them that word. And so give it to them. I did no matter if I was, you know, a little rough around the edges, a little green around the gills, but give them the faith I did. And with pastor, we worked on those teaching skills, those preaching skills, those skills that you can learn only from doing it. And throughout the year, I just know that I grew so much from that. I mean, my parent, both of my parents are Lutheran school teachers. And so I'd like to say that I have some skills already there just from seeing them do it and being in their own classroom and just hearing them every day. But I also learned in that way too, hands on. And so just preaching and teaching were there. And the pastoral ministry side where you just care for people just flows so freely from being able to know Scripture. So you mentioned call day. Call day is coming up for both of you now that you're both fourth year seminarians. It's almost time for those first calls. And you guys don't know where you're going to be going. Those first calls are unknown until call night for both of you. So let's talk briefly. We only have a few minutes left about what you're, how, what you're feeling going into call night, that expectation of, of now being out into the world as a pastor after, after call night, after ordination. Zachary, what are you looking forward to? What are you feeling as, as you're approaching call night? Wow, there's just, there's just so much excitement. So, so many just like thoughts and questions like, where, where are we going to go? Uh, my wife and I, where are we going to go? No clue, you know, like we're going to have to live somewhere, give God's word to a people that we might not know, but we're not going to know most likely, but just that excitement is real. And so all of the guys here at Fort Wayne Seminary, I know are just waiting for their, for their chance to be able to, to, to bless a congregation, bless a people with the, with the word and the sacraments and just give them the care that they need as a pastor. Jason, what, what word would you use to describe <laughs> what you're feeling right now in preparation in anticipation of call day. Oh, I mean, I have to copy what Zachary said and just echo his thoughts to a T. That word would be excited. And that's felt throughout the entire campus. My class is just so excited to find out where we're going, where we're going to be able to serve Christ's people and to proclaim the word to them. But I did notice in thinking back on call day for Vicarage, you know, I I remember being like really chill and not that worried about where I was going to go until the day of placement arrived. And it was actually call day. I woke up with this huge knot in my stomach like, oh my gosh, I don't know where I'm going. That's kind of terrifying. And so there's a lot of excitement going around right now, but I have a pretty good feeling that that knot in my stomach is going to return on call day this year. But... People have told us over and over, God's got this. God has all of us in mind and our congregations in mind, and he doesn't make mistakes. And so we're going to go where he wants us to go. And that's that. We'll sort out the rest as it comes along. But we're just so, so excited to see what God has in mind for each of us. And we can't wait. With just about a minute left for each of you, what would you say to the young person considering church work in the future? You know, think back to those days when you were in high school or college and thinking about church work. What would you say to that person who might have been in the same shoes that, that you were in at that time? Jason, we'll start with you. Yes. Very shortly, just do it. Don't think about it too hard and just give it a try because you will never know unless you give it a try. And even if you get in church work for a while and you realize, you know, this, maybe this isn't for me, 
that's still awesome. If you're at a Concordia University college, then you'll still be in an amazing environment that'll prepare you for your vocation, whatever it is. And if that does end up being church work, you're going to be so well equipped and so thankful that you spent your time there. So just do it. Don't think about it too hard and just do it. Zachary? And I thought Jason stole my thunder. I was going to say something along the lines of just do it, but I want to extend my range even, even, even lower to, you know, I was seven years old when I first had that. So I was like, if you are a young man or woman who is even remotely interested in the Bible in going to church, I'd say consider being a pastor, a teacher, deacon as DCE, a minister of the word. Just consider it along with all those other things. Let the Lord direct you. And again, I have to mirror Jason. You know, even if you don't end up going into any of those, whatever you do in life, you can give God's word to those people who are there with you working in whatever job. Our guest today, Jason Com, Concordia Seminary, St. Louis. Jason, thank you so much for talking with us today. This is a joy. Thanks again for having me here. And Zachary Stair, Concordia Theological Seminary in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Zachary, thanks so much for being our guest. Thank you for having me. You can learn more about Set Apart to Serve by visiting lcms.org slash SAS. You've been listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. The Coffee Hour with Andy and Sarah is a production of KFUO. To support The Coffee Hour and KFUO Radio, visit KFUO.org. You can also text KFUO to 41444 or send an email to gifts at KFUO.org. And you can call us at 800-844-0524. KFUO. Christ for you anytime, anywhere. Anywhere.